Senator Jackson, thank you for joining me on the Biscuit Blitz. Good to see you, Matt. Always good to see you. Now, before I start the clock, um, I just want you to briefly state uh, your name, how long you've lived in Charlotte, and, and what it is you do. For, for anyone out there under a rock who doesn't know what you do, let us know what you do. I'm Jeff Jackson. I serve in the State Senate, the North Carolina State Senate in District 37, which is one-fifth of Mecklenburg County. I've represented it for the last six years, and I've lived in Charlotte for the last 10 years. There it is. We're on a decade now. That's great. We should have some sort of a celebration. That's right. Gold watch or something like that. Um, all right, Senator Jackson, I'm going to start the clock and we will dive in to the Biscuit Blitz. And let's just start here. How much of your work now is being spent on our response to the pandemic? Can you, can you uh, uh, break that down for us? Are you spending 85% of your time working on COVID-19 now? Or how has that uh, impacted your day-to-day -day work? I think that's right. I think it is actually about 85%. Um, in the first two months, it was 100%. The only reason it's no longer 100% is because we just have other bills and pieces of legislation that have to pass that don't deal with COVID. But it's amazing how many of those bills are somehow impacted by COVID in ways that you wouldn't think. So we have a bunch of bills where we obviously need to help people who are unemployed and need public health, uh, need public health assistance. But then there's stuff about the DMV and how their operations have to be modified to accommodate the situation that we're in. And there's a ton of constituent work, more constituent work than I've ever done before to help people get unemployment insurance because the unemployment system was like this little rowboat in the ocean we never really paid much attention to. And then this tsunami came and just swamped it. And they started getting 70,000 phone calls every single day, which is as many as they would get in a year. And so constituents who aren't getting through, a lot of them come to our office. So we deal with a lot of that every single day. Hundreds of emails every day. Hundreds of emails. Well, of the hundreds of emails that are, so shall we say, thousands of emails that are out there every day trying to hit our inboxes, I'm grateful for the ones that you've been sending because they're chock full of really good, solid, clear information. And, and so thank you for all of that work and for encapsulating that on a regular basis to keep us up to date. Do you feel like you're swimming through a sea of misinformation and uh, like a lot of your efforts have to be about sifting through all of it to give us what's real and what's right? I think that's definitely the case. I mean, especially early on, there was a ton of misinformation and I felt like our office needed to put some good information out there, if nothing else, than to just to balance the scales, to, to give good information, at least a fighting chance of reaching people. It takes a long time to sift through it all and come up with a balanced perspective. You can't just read one report or even look at one set of numbers. You have to sort of familiarize yourself with a basket of numbers, a, a whole set of metrics here, and sort of learn over time what they mean and their relative significance to other things. And then you got to learn to talk to people in a real, you know, plain, no BS kind of way. Because if people detect an ounce of partisanship, in what you're saying, whether it's on the left or on the right, they put you in a category of people really not to be listened to, not to be taken seriously. Absolutely. Well, and as you had shared with us when you spoke at our Creative Mornings event, gosh, that seems like so long ago, but it's still fresh in my mind. You were sharing that a big part of being an elected official is is campaigning, you know, and, and so what is campaigning like in, in the in the pandemic era? Well, for me, it stopped completely for over three months, and we didn't send out any fundraising. We didn't do any events. It was just all about actually doing the job. And then at a certain point, you sort of, now that we're close to the election, we have no choice but to turn on some type of campaign apparatus, a lot of phone calls. Originally, when this campaign started in January, I told everybody, I'm going to knock on 10,000 doors. That was my big goal. And I got to about 1,100 and the universe had other plans. So now we do a whole lot of phone calls, but they're interesting. They're not political phone calls. I'm not calling saying, hey, vote for me, or hey, public education is my thing, or healthcare is my thing. They're much more personal. You call and say, hey, how you doing? How's your family? Do you need anything? Like I'm your state senator, it's my job. You don't, we, what I usually tell people is, you have no idea who I am, but I happen to be your state senator. And if you need anything, it's my job to help. And that's usually the bulk of the conversation. Wow. Well, and you're a, you are a big door-to-door -door guy. You're always so involved in the community out there um, gathering with people. So yeah, that, that is um, something that we're not able to do right now. I'm sure you're missing that, but it's great that you're able to take some of that spirit and bring it into the phone call efforts as well. Um, well, you know us at Charlotte is Creative. We are all about supporting and 
connecting the creative community here. So I'll end with this question. It is about our creative community. What role do you think artists and creatives and creative entrepreneurs will have in helping North Carolina and, and our economy sort of pivot, you know, and evolve in this, in this, new, in this new era? That's a really good question. And before I joined the Senate, I would not have had as much of an appreciation for it as I've gained over the last six years. For instance, public art wasn't something that I particularly appreciated before I was in the Senate. And then I learned how it really helps uh, define a community, establish a, a communal identity. And then you've seen, you know, just writing um, Black Lives Matter in the middle of the street, how people wanted to have their graduation photos taken there. It became a source of meaning and purpose. So I think that last word, is what artists are going to be really helpful in doing. They're going to pull from this purpose, collective purpose, and show us how we, how we rose above our differences, came together, and did something that could only be done together. And hopefully, when we get through this, we will have minimized the loss of life, and we will have something to be proud of that we actually did what so many people would have said at the beginning of the year we couldn't do because we're too divided. But we, we still have the chance in North Carolina to get it right. And if we do, our artists are going to have a ton of things to celebrate and to reflect back at us when we're through the other side of this thing. I think it could be, it could be a wonderful and in a, in a, in a really divisive time. It could be a wonderful signal and a wonderful reminder how much we have in common. Well, I, I just love, love that answer. It's so aligned with, with what we believe. We believe that creatives are going to lead the way in many respects out of a crisis like this. And that creatives can model not just purpose, as you said, but also um, collaboration. Creatives can model collaboration. And it, and it takes collaboration, like the kind that you bring to your job every day, to, to actually figure out a creative approach to get through all of these uh, challenges th that we're approaching as a society. So, and that we're in the throes of as a society. So I love that answer. It's right out of the hymn book for us. So thanks for sharing that. And thanks for spending five minutes on the Biscuit Blitz. Um, you're doing great, amazing work for our community, for our state. And it's an honor to, uh, to call you a friend as well. So thank you, Senator Jackson. Great to see you, Matt. We're gonna shake hands sometime soon. Someday, my friend, someday. I look forward to it. Take care. You too.